Hi everyone, let us discuss this result. In this result, we have two equivalent parameterized curves, alpha and beta. Getting alpha is defined from close interval AB to U and beta is defined from close interval CD to U where U is any open subset of RN. So these are two equivalent parameterized curves. We have F is any continuous function defined from U to R. And what we have to prove? We have to prove that value of line integral of F okay with parameterization alpha is same as value of line integral of f with parameterization beta okay this is possible if uh, because alpha and beta are equivalent parameterized of course this thing we have to prove getting so let us start with the given information let me write here we have we have alpha and beta are equivalent parameterized of course okay so let me mention parameterized curve see in previous videos we have already seen the definition of equivalent parameterized curves see these are two equivalent so therefore there exists one diffeomorphism h from close interval cd to close interval ab so let me mention here therefore there exists a diffeomorphism diffeomorphism h okay we are we are calling it as h from cd close interval cd to close interval a b such that simply i use the definition of diffeomorphism okay uh, sorry equivalent parameters because such that alpha of h of s is equal to beta of s for all s belongs to close interval cd i am calling it as one this is very important thing so what is diffeomorphism let us recall diffeomorphism that means that function is bijective function is differentiable and its inverse is also differentiable okay so th this is the important information we have right now so let us go further so we have to prove that the value of these two integrals is same so we'll start with right hand side okay we will start with this integral and we will prove that it is equal to the integral which is in left hand side so let us start from here okay we have some space so let us use uh, i'm considering considering integration what we have integration c to d f of beta of t right norm beta dash of t dt so we have variable t here so if you replace variable t by s doesn't matter okay we will have the same integral if you change the variable value of uh, integral will be unchanged so therefore this is equal to integration c to d simply i'm replacing t by s so f of b of s norm b dash of s ds okay simply i replace variable t by s but we know that beta of s is equal to alpha of h of s so here and here we can put its values getting but there is no more space to write so make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let us put the value of uh, beta of s so let me continue here so this is equal to integration c to d f of alpha of h of s getting since beta of s is equal to alpha uh, alpha of h of s norm alpha of h of s but we have to take its derivative ds okay so let me mention from from one we get okay so let me remove this one it is not required okay yes so i have removed so let us continue so this is equal to integration c to d f of alpha of h of s simply i will copy paste here so here we have to take derivative but as you can see here we have a composition of two functions alpha and h that means we have to take a derivative of outer function first and after that we have to take a derivative of inner function we call it as a chain rule so that chain rule i am going to apply here alpha dash of h of s getting so this is a dash we have h of s derivative of alpha into h dash of s ds so this is equal to integration c to d okay f of alpha of h of s okay i will simply copy paste norm uh, we can take a separate separate norm getting so there is a product so we can take separate separate norm but here there is no need to take norm since h is function from close interval cd to ab so domain and codomain both are subsets of r getting so there is no need to apply norm simply we can apply mod so uh, mod h dash of s ds getting so this thing we have 
see here h is diffeomorphism that means it is a bijective function so therefore its derivative as well as its differentiable also getting so therefore its derivative cannot be zero getting derivative cannot be zero that means mod h dash of s will have either value h of s h dash of s or minus h dash of s that means its derivative will not be zero that means either it is positive or it is negative so let me mention that thing here here h is diffeomorphism getting so diffeomorphism so therefore h dash of s is either positive or h dash of s will be negative so there will be two possibilities since it cannot be zero it is diffeomorphism that means it is bijective as well as it is differentiable so that's why we have so there will be two possibilities so obviously we will consider two different cases let us see what will happen if h dash of s is greater than zero so I'm considering case number one, case number one is h dash of s is greater than zero. So then value of h dash of s mod h dash of s will be h dash of s since it is positive. So when you apply mod, definitely you will have the same value as well as one more thing we will have. If derivative of any function is greater than zero, we say the function is increasing. So let me mention and h is increasing function getting it is increasing function so let me draw the diagram so you can easily understand what is happening here so we have a function h so it is from close interval a b it to close interval cd obviously it is a bijective function and it is increasing so we will have a function like this i am draw i have drawn the rough sketch of it ready so therefore uh, h of a sorry we have h from c to cd to a b okay so here should be cd and here should be a b right Okay, so h of c should be a since it is increasing function. So starting point will match with the starting point of this interval and h of d is equal to b. Okay, h of d is equal to b because function is increasing function is bijective and many things we have. So that's why we have this thing. Okay, so let us continue with this integral, but there is no more space to write. So make a screenshot of it and then we will go further. So therefore the integral will be integration what we have c to d f of alpha of h of s right norm alpha dash of h of s this thing we have after that what we have mod h of s but value of mod h dash of s is equal to h dash of s so let me write here h dash of s and ds we have. So we have to solve this integration. What will I do? I will use substitution. So I'm going to put something here. So let me write putting h of s is equal to t. So you know that when we put anything, we have to find derivatives as well as we have to find new limits. So let us find derivative first. Its derivative will be h dash of s dx. Its derivative will be 1. So we'll have simply dt. So let us find new limits for s is equal to c t is equal to I am finding h of c we will have getting since if I put s is equal to c t is equal to h of c but right now we have got h of c is equal to a so its value is a similarly for s is equal to d upper limit I am considering now so t will be h of d if I put the value of s is equal to d so h of d is equal to b we have so this is b okay so let me remove this one so we'll have more space to write so therefore the integral will be new limits are integration a to b f of alpha of right h of s is equal to t we have put h of s is equal to t norm alpha dash of h of s is equal to t again right and h dash of s ds is equal to dt so we have got this integral and this is a required integral getting so the same thing we have got that means we have proved this result but right now only for first case now we have to discuss a second case also that means when h dash of s is negative it is less than zero let us discuss second case so let me mention case number two okay so case number two is obviously h dash of s is less than zero so you know that when we we have any negative number getting then and if you find it small you will have minus h dash of s since it is negative number getting it it has already minus sign when you apply one more minus to it minus minus plus thing we will have it is negative it means that function is decreasing and i should mention here and h is decreasing function it is decreasing function so see we will have graph like this 
okay let me draw the graph so you can easily understand so we have a function h from close interval cd to close interval ab so function is decreasing so we'll have function like this getting it's a decreasing function so obviously okay value of uh, h of c is equal to b therefore h of c is equal to b you can easily see here okay so starting at starting point it has a value b and uh, and h of d is equal to a h of d is equal to a that means we get exactly opposite thing to the uh, previous case getting in previous case, uh, case what we had h of s is h of c is equal to a and h of d is equal to b but right now we have exactly opposite thing let us continue but there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so therefore the integral will be okay this is equal to we have integration integration c to d f of alpha of h of s getting and norm alpha dash of h of s after that we have mod h dash of s but right now its value is minus h dash of s so i'm minus i will take here minus i will take outside since integration we take constant outside h dash of s ds so we have to solve this integration we cannot solve it directly we need to put something same substitution i will put uh, do here putting i am putting h of s is equal to t when we put we have to find derivatives and new limits so let us find its derivative will be h dash of s i should write ds here derivative of t is 1 so we'll have dt let us find new limits for for s is equal to c and for s is equal to d for lower limit and for upper limit we have to find new values t is equal to t is equal to right when i put s is equal to c here we will have t is equal to s of h of c and when i put d uh, s is equal to d here t is equal to h of d but now we have got values h of c is equal to what b i should write b here and h of d is equal to a so we will have these new limits okay so we'll consider all these things then the value of integral will be integration let us consider minus sign it has integration new limits uh, b to a we have right b to a lower limit b upper limit a f of alpha of t i should write since h of s is equal to t norm alpha dash of h of s is equal to t getting h dash of s ds is equal to dt we have so you know that when we have minus sign if you want to remove minus sign simply we need to change interchange the upper and lower limit so same thing i will do i will remove this minus sign i need to interchange upper lower limits so we'll have this one f of alpha of t right norm alpha dash of t dt so this is a required integral we got that means in both cases we have got same integral so let me mention therefore from both the cases okay from both the cases what we get we get integration c to d we started with beta okay parameterization beta integration c to d f of beta of t norm beta dash of t dt and finally what we got in uh, both the cases integration a to b f of alpha of t getting norm alpha dash of t dt so that means if you consider a parameterization alpha or beta the value of line integral will be same but the condition is both uh, parameterization should be equivalent okay so we prove this result make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you bye bye